There's something in my eye. Oh, I don't know what it is. Hi guys and welcome back. So it's now summer in Australia, which means two things. Number one, basically every Aussie is gonna be trying to plan some like epic road trip, especially after being cooped up all year. And number two, everybody from Sydney is going to Byron Bay. I mean, it's already started happening on my Instagram stories. Basically every second person is in Byron Bay, which is like great. I did go to Byron earlier this year, like literally as soon as lockdown lifted, I was like, I'm going. I did actually make a vlog about driving up to the Gold Coast and all the places that I stayed. But recently I've had a few friends ask me, where did you go on your way up there? Like, where did you stay overnight? Did you camp? Where did you eat? What was the best cafes? Did you go on any cool hikes? That sort of thing. So I figure I'm going to make like a concise little video of all the best places between Sydney and Byron for a road trip. Obviously it depends like how much time you have. You can easily drive to Byron in one day. I have done it before, wouldn't recommend it, not very fun. But I mean, ideally you'd spend five days to a week sort of slowly going up there so you can stop in at places. You're not spending all of your time driving. I reckon as long as you have like three to four days, you should be able to like have a good amount of stuff. So number one is actually pretty close to Sydney. It's on the central coast, probably about an hour and a half out of Sydney. There is a campsite called Little Beach, which I love. It's a tiny campsite. It has six spaces. I went there a couple of weeks ago. It was just so nice, like right on the beach. Literally you wake up and there's the beach right there in front of you. It's lovely. There are some really great coastal walks around there as well. So you could really just spend a whole day there after you camp, depending on how quickly you wanna keep moving up but yeah little beach is a great campsite it does book out because it's so small so if you plan ahead you should be fine it's a tent only campsite though it's about a five minute walk from the car park down to the beach so just keep that in mind if you're like car camping or something you can't really do that you need a tent and don't do what i did and get there and realize that you forgot your sleeping bag and your sleeping mat and your swimmers very dumb. <laughs> All right, next up is Tomari National Park, which is just north of Newcastle, sort of just outside Port Stephens. There's a really beautiful walk you can do up to a lookout that looks down the coast, the Tomari Head Summit Walk, and you just follow it all the way up and you'll get these incredible views. It's one of those places that you like always see on Instagram, like influencers are always there in their active wear, like getting their amazing shot. And it is stunning it's a really nice walk it only takes about half an hour to get up there and if you're there at the right time of year sort of like winter and spring you should probably see some whales off in the distance which is amazing okay so then just north of fort stevens there is a campsite at seal rocks a campsite called treachery camp i really wanted to stay there but just the way that i sort of did my trip it didn't work out but it's a really cool campsite sort of very isolated and like on the beach and just like a real good like sitting around the fire sleeping under the stars and again it's like right on the beach so yeah if you're camping as you're going up check out treachery camp and see if you can book in there i forgot to add that just north of treachery camp you'll find foster which is a cute little small town where they have great food there's a really good coastal walk I definitely recommend the cafe called tart just for like a coffee and a cute brunch vibe before you keep driving Okay, then number four, if you keep going up north, you'll get to Crowdy Bay National Park, which is another place that has a really great beachfront campground. Do you see a theme here? Like, I love a beachfront camping. I actually just went here for the day. I was planning to do this really nice coastal hike, but it was closed because of bushfires. But then I just ended up walking out to this really beautiful headland lookout and it was lovely. It's a really great beach there. It's got good surfing. Um, you can just sort of like walk up and down the beach, which I love doing. I love watching surfers. And if you've got a four wheel drive, you can drive out onto the beach to do fishing and stuff I guess I don't know I'm not a four-wheel drive person I recommend going to sort of the northern area of the park you can drive out to the diamond head campground even if you're not staying there you can park there for the day and from there you can do some coastal walks again hopefully it's open by the time you get there but the walk out to mermaid lookout is really really nice it's just a short walk sort of through the bush I really recommend that it's just good to like get off the highway and stretch your legs and like I had a little picnic there and it was lovely so keep it in mind okay number five is Port Macquarie. I'd never been to Port Macquarie until I did this road trip a couple months ago and I was like hang on a second this is a really cool little town or like city I guess it's pretty big. I really liked it. I just spent the night here. I was like sleeping in my car so I don't have good recommendations for where to sleep but there are some amazing beaches. I woke up in the morning and walked along the break wall around to the town beach and that was really pretty. There was a cute little kiosk on the beach selling coffee like it was just lovely and everyone there sort of Felt like they knew each other and really liked the vibes there and had good coffee, good food, friendly people, 
what more can you want? Around like Nobby's Beach is a really good place to go if you surf or if you like to watch surfers. There's a really good little lookout there with a bench and I just sat there and read my book and just chilled out and it was so nice. I'm pretty sure that was at the Shelley Beach car park but you can really just sort of like walk around all the beaches and around the headlands and it is absolutely lovely. I actually was going to sleep at Shelley Beach car park because I saw a few vans parked up there. I mean, it's probably not allowed, but I don't think they'd check. So if you're sleeping in a van, that's a really beautiful place to be. Again, not sure if it's totally legal, but that's on you. Also in Port Macquarie, you've got the Sea Acres National Park, which is a rainforesty coastal national park with this really cool boardwalk you can walk through just to like get a vibe for the whole landscape i guess it is a pretty family friendly park it's not like a big hiking sort of place you'll see like lots of kids and old people but it is really beautiful if you love koalas there's also the koala hospital there which looks after injured koalas and sort of rehabilitates them and it is so cute i haven't been there but a couple of my colleagues went there on a work trip and it looked really cute i do want to go there at some point all right then another campsite is just a bit further north near southwest rocks which is a cute little town i keep saying cute i'm sorry but like whatever Southwest Dogs is a little town. Just before you get into the town, there is this historic site called Trial Bay Jail. It's basically just an old jail building that they used for convicts, I'm pretty sure. And it is now a campsite. And there are heaps of kangaroos who live here. And it's right on the beach. And it's sort of like a bay. So there's like a beach on one side and a bay on the other, which means that if you camp on the bay side and you're right near the water, you get to watch the sunset over the water, which is really cool because it faces west. And that's just really not something you get to do normally in New South Wales. Yeah, I camped here right by the water and it was so beautiful. I was in one of those tents like on top of my car. So it was really nice, like lying in bed and like looking out on the water and there's kangaroos hopping past. And then I woke up in the morning for sunrise and then did a nice little walk around to Gap Beach, which I really recommend. It only took like an hour and it was a good little coastal walk first thing in the morning. And then you can go into Southwest Rocks for breakfast and coffee before you keep driving. Okay, number seven, then we have Coffs Harbour, which is another city that, city, town, small city that I'd never really been to up until this year. And again, I was like, hang on a second, this is kind of cool. I didn't actually spend the night here, but I got here kind of early in the morning and spent the day walking around. If you just kind of go down to the jetty, it's easy to find a park. And then from there, you can walk along the foreshore and then out to this island that's connected by a bridge. And it's sort of like a wildlife island, I guess. It's called Mutton Bird Island Nature Reserve. And it's basically just a really hilly island. That it's tiny, but you kind of walk to the top and you get really great views. And then you can walk down and you're sort of on this cliffy, rocky area where I just love watching the ocean, like really powerful ocean hitting rocks. Like I just find it mesmerizing. So it was really cool to just sit there for a bit and like mm, reflect, you know? And then just a little bit out of the city further north, there is a headline called Look At Me Now. The whole time I was there, I had Selena Gomez's Look At Her Now song stuck in my head. But that's a really beautiful coastal walk. There was nobody else there. You sort of walk along the beach and then you kind of go up onto this bluff where there were all these kangaroos just hanging out on the coast. Really, really cool. And then you sort of circle back. There isn't like an official parking space for this i kind of just had to find parking on a suburban street but if you google look at her now look at me now headland it's easy to find all right so then my second last spot is dorigo national park which oh my gosh i have been literally recommending this to everybody i meet this place is amazing it's about an hour inland you have to drive like uphill which i hate doing but i still did it and you get to this rainforest national park which is like what it's like, how did I just go from the coast to this? Like, it's stunning. It feels like you're in far north Queensland, honestly. You walk down these like dirt tracks. There's like so many animals and birds and what are those things? Like cicadas, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And then you walk out to these waterfalls, which you can swim in and it's like, crystal clear water it's so beautiful like i'm truly not doing this justice so you can do a walk out to crystal showers falls which is an absolute must do in my books it is so nice it probably takes about two hours maybe to walk all the way there and then back it's sort of like a loop through the rainforest and on the way you pass a lot of other waterfalls as well oh so pretty and then just go to the visitor center as well because they've got this sort of elevated walkway that you can walk along out to this amazing view of the whole park below you it's 
so so cool if you do one thing on your trip up to byron go to dorigo it's amazing and again there are campsites up there as well so if you go up there you can do the hike and then spend the night and then come back down to the highway perfect okay then finally is a little town that i reckon is probably about two hours south of byron called sawtell it's just like a quintessential beach town but it just i really like the vibe of it it had two really cool cafes so it's got this headland called the bonneville lookout where you have to go there for sunrise it was like the best sunrise that i've seen in new south wales hands down it was stunning and there's a guy who has a little coffee cart so you can buy your coffee and sit there and watch the sunrise and then all the surfers start coming down and you can watch the surfers and it's just like really nice wholesome morning you know it's so good and then from there you can walk along the beach and then up to the other headland on the other side of the beach for another really good view can you tell that i like walking on headlands like that's basically all i do but um it's so nice it's so beautiful so those are the nine places between sydney and byron that i can personally vouch for and it's like definitely places to put on your itinerary again there are so many spots between sydney and byron that you can visit like i can i can come up with like 20 off the top of my head but these are the ones that i swear by that i love that i recommend to all of my friends i have written a bunch of articles about places between sydney and byron so i'm going to link those down there that's just got more information on like food coffee accommodation i can't even remember what else but like other stuff as well so yeah hopefully this video has been helpful give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it if you end up going on a little road trip please let me know send me photos i want to be included happy summer happy exploring bye